What is cracking, everybody? It's Mega Pyman here, and welcome to the second episode of Free the Game, the show dedicated to bringing you free games, mods, free to play games, and free browser games that you may or may not enjoy. Today, we're looking at a demo of an upcoming game called Soldier of. Not to be confused with the Soldier of Fortune series, this is just Soldier of, created by Solar Luna, or Lunar. I don't remember if it's Solar Luna or Lunar. Anyway, it'll be in the description. And to my knowledge, it consists of one guy making this game. Now, this game is pretty cool. Originally, for this series, I only wanted to show off games that were either entirely finished or mostly finished. This is a demo of Soldier Of, but this is the only thing that of it that exists at this point. Even though recently, around August, there was a news post on the page of ModDB for this game that it is currently back in being worked on. So hopefully there'll be a new demo of it soon or something new coming out for it soon that you can download and play. But for right now, there is this one demo. Now the reason why I want to do a video of this is because I find this game to be very interesting not only in gameplay in and of itself, but it's got a very interesting art style. It's got this combination of old Game Boy Color sprites for objects and characters, as you can see with our main character here, the red guy known as Simon. And you also can see the objects such as that sign, our old school Game Boy Color looking sprites in a 3D environment, which is everything else. Now, this game was created in the Blender 3D model engine, as well as using a program called Python to code it, so using a combination of both Blender and Python, you get Soldier Of. So it's pretty cool, it is a demo, it's rather short, so we'll probably end up playing through the entirety of it in this episode. But let's get into it, shall we? Now, there isn't anything to tell you what the controls are outside of a paragraph that's given when you download it. And the paragraph doesn't necessarily go over everything in detail, but does give you a good basics of what you need to do. Now, you can move your character around using the arrow keys. And if you double tap in any direction, he will roll, so you can use that to dodge out of the way of enemy attacks. Using the C button, or the C key on your keyboard, and the X key on your keyboard, activate the different slots that you have available. Now this game is sort of set up controlled-wise like an old-school Game Boy game, in which you get the ability to move around, and you get two buttons. You get the A button, which, if you look at the HUD, you can see that you have uh, a gun, you have a thing that's next to it that is like an, uh, an item finder, and then you have your health. Now, the gun is in the A button slot. The item finder, which lets you uh, interact with things and look at things, is in the B button slot. The A button slot is controlled with the X key, the B button slot is controlled with the C key. So it's a little interesting to try to get used to how this actually works, but it's fairly simple once you figure it out. Now, by pressing X, since I have this gun equipped, I can shoot, and by pressing C, it doesn't actually do anything unless I'm next to something. So if I go next to this sign and press C, I can then read the sign. New Petria, population 53,910. Now you can actually change what is in what slot if by pressing C. This also gives you the a chance to go to an options menu that actually isn't in the demo yet, so you don't have any options. You can just play it in a smaller screen or you can maximize the screen. And it also gives you the play time. Right now I've got a minute and 18 seconds. I believe it does pause the game and pause the play time when you go into this menu. And you also can go to your equipment. So if you go to your equipment section, you can see all the equipment that we have available to us right now. Now, it was said on the page that you were given a bunch of equipment that you won't necessarily have when um, the full game comes out. You know, this other stuff that you have to collect. Like, we have the gun that we have equipped right now, we have a secondary gun that's a pistol, we have the item finder slash let's look at crap uh, button and um, this is a grenade right now and you can put these on any slots that you want if I press C right now I can equip the grenade to the B button slot and then by pressing C I then throw a grenade the grenade, the grenade doesn't really affect by how much you hold it down it just kind of throws it automatically but I do like how it looks in the 3d environment especially with the explosion being in 2d now I do want to equip my item finder slash uh, look at thing at the end because if this isn't equipped and you're in a cutscene you can't actually continue going in the cutscene. Cutscenes in this game take place um, if there's any talking the talking will be in a text box and then you have to press a button to continue the button you have to press is whatever this uh, like crosshair looking thing 
is whichever slot it is in. So you either have to press X if it's in the A slot, or you have to press C if it's in the B slot. If you don't have it in any of the slots, then you cannot continue in a cutscene, and you're kind of just stuck there. And you have to restart the game and put it and make sure you have it in a slot when you go to the cutscene. I would like to see it changed so that you can like press the space bar or a different key on your keyboard to continue in cutscenes. That way I don't always have to have this equipped. That way if I want to, I can have my assault rifle and my a pistol equipped at the same time just depending upon what i have to pick on but you can't really do that unless you exactly know where the cutscenes are going to show up at because if you accidentally find yourself in a cutscene and you don't have this equipped it's stuck but you can equip a pistol i'm going to equip it to my, to my a slot right now by pressing x and you can see that our hud has changed the pistol is now where the assault rifle is and you have 10 shots and then an infinite amount of ammo so if we shoot all these 10 shots give it a little time to reload and then you get 10 more shots the assault rifle doesn't have um, infinite ammo the assault rifle actually has limited ammo but everything else the grenades and the pistol have infinite ammo and unlike the assault rifle you have to click every time or press the x button or whatever slot button you have it in every time you want to shoot you see at the end of the hud there we have 100 out of 100 that is our health by picking up hearts in the game you can then increase your health if you end up losing some there was on the update that it has been changed so that instead of hearts to increase your health that enemies will drop you can actually pick up food to increase your health um, that's not in the demo right now, that is in the current version, that it has not been released yet. So hopefully uh, that will come out sometime soon, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to equip my assault rifle here again, and we will continue. Here in the background you've got the old school retro sound uh, for the music going on. That music is created by the same guy who created the game, he apparently creates music as well. And so far, his music's been pretty cool, even though this isn't my favorite track. It's only tra two tracks in this demo, but this is my favorite one. So let's stop talking about the game and start playing it, shall we? Let's move up here, and we have a cutscene to go to. Little bit of an intro cutscene. This area definitely shows off the aesthetic that they're going for in this game with the graphic styles, with the, the 2D barricades and the 2D sprite fire. It's like an old school Game, old school game Boy Color type of uh, looking for 2D sprites. So here's how you find out what your main character's name is. He is Simon, and he apparently only has one eye at any given time, because the other guy is covered by hair. What? What happened? And here we have our antagonists. I don't know if they're speaking an actual language. It could be Latin, it could be Spanish, it could be Mandarin. I don't know. If anybody knows if this is an actual language, please let me know in the comments. To my knowledge, it's just random letters made out to be a uh, fictional language. But the enemy is kind of weird. I think they have masks on, but I'm not sure because I can't really tell if that's if they're like supposed to be robots or if they have like, a mask on or what. It's not really said, and I can't understand what they're saying, because it's either a made-up language or a language that I don't speak. Continue our way through this cutscene here. Who were those guys? I should follow them. The thing that I like about this area is that it shows, it's the first area that really shows off the, a good amount of the aesthetic with the game, especially showing off that you can actually see the sides, not only of the buildings, but of the ground you're standing on. It's a cool little interesting way of, of a world to set up. I don't necessarily know if I like the fact that it's just a big black void in the background. And there's also some blue over there. Don't want to get stuck. Ooh. Secret area! Yeah, I've never been back here before. I didn't know this was an area. You rummage through the trash can. You find half-eaten hamburger. You eat it. Just kidding. Who would eat from the trash? <laughs> no, this isn't Streets of Rage. You're onto the trash can. You get a gun clip. Who would throw a gun clip away? Ooh, found more ammo. Fancy. So I didn't actually know those were there, but that's an interesting uh, new thing in the game. There are now secret areas that you can rummage through trash. Fancy. Fancy. Let's move on. I don't know if I'm a big fan of just the black void in the background. If hopefully, maybe in the future, they'll maybe add like a sky in the background. That would be kind of cool. I don't know how that would look, but 
in my mind, it would look alright. You can't actually go over here where the bad guys came from. The only thing I do in this area is go to your right or go in this building. Now, I'm going to go in this building first because it will show off a little bit of combat. As you see, we have our enemy right there. And if I walk up here, I can shoot him! There's blue pills. That's ammo I can pick up. I am full on ammo and a magazine, so I probably should have waited until I reloaded to pick that up. But unfortunately, there's not much to do in this building. You can go upstairs... And it'll show you how stairs work in this game. It reminds me a little bit of the newer Pokemon games, of how the 3D aspects that they have included in those. A little bit. Uh, it doesn't have the, the new way of making sprites that the, the new Pokemon games do, like black and white. Oh, hey, you respawn. I didn't know you would respawn. It's health great. But, because it's got the old school uh, Game Boy Color uh, sprites, but it's still pretty cool. And I also especially like this section right here where you actually walk through there. Shows off a good way of the aesthetics in the game. Now there's this door right here, and unfortunately you can't go in it. The vault door is locked tightly. There is a keypad to the left of the door. You can't use this keypad to my knowledge, and there is nothing to give you a code for that keypad. So that's a little bit annoying. Let's just move on, shall we? As you saw, I used up all the wep the bullets in that clip, and I had to reload, so I'm now down to 160 bullets that I can use overall. Some more bad guys. More language that may not or may or may not be language. Hmm, I don't think those guys are friendly, considering one of them tried to kill you earlier. No, I don't think they are either. Well, here goes nothing. For great justice! He's dead. He just blows up. They might be robots, because they just explode. Let's go over here. Now, this area is pretty cool, because it shows off a little bit of reflectiveness. Now, you're supposed to be walking in water. Originally, I thought this was supposed to be ice or tile, until I actually looked at the sound effect that's playing when you walk on it. That's set to be, like, a water footstep sound effect. But that, reflective, that reflectiveness looks really nice. You can also go back over here. To, but to no avail because there's not actually anything over here outside of showing the first area of hey you have a falling animation congratulations you can go over here but that just takes you back out here and you can go back in this way it just takes you back out here so two doors lead you to the exact same door kind of strange can't do anything out in this building as of right now a little bit annoying once you there's more you can do in there but you can't these guys also respawn roll I'm rolling can't deal my rolling I rolling for ages. Look at that roll. Look at that roll. Look at that roll. I roll for all of eternity! Let me kill you. Ammo! Hiya! Oh, you didn't drop anything? That's a little bit annoying. We can't go over here yet. We gotta get some an item beforehand. Now, if you look at your equipment, you can see that you have a good amount of items. And you have all the items that you pretty much need in the game, except for one. You have two open item slots, but to my knowledge, there's only one item in the demo that you can pick up right now. I gotta be careful not to press escape, because pressing escape will actually close the game, and all I want to do is get out of the main menu. So let's go up here. We have some more enemies. We can't actually shoot these enemies right now, because of these trees. But if you equip your grenade, you can then, um, uh, we go, and then chuck it at them. And they don't run from grenades. That'll be something interesting to, to add in later on. Yeah, hopefully he'll add in that they can actually discern whether or not there is a grenade there. But as of right now, they can't. You can also blow this rock up, but there's no, no real point to it, because until we get the upgrade we need, we, can, we still can't go over here. Let's equip our gun again, because we will need that pretty soon. And move on into this building that has definitely seen better days. Ugh, this place is a mess. Let's see. I don't believe you can break any of these rocks open or they lead to anything. There's a hole here, but there's nothing down there. So let's just continue on this way. Now this area introduces a little bit of a puzzle area. Unfortunately, I rolled off the edge too soon, so I'm going to have to wait till the next area to show that off. We go over here. Also, this is the second track in the game, and this is my favorite track. I'm a more, much bigger fan of this track than I am of the other one. There is a third track that you can listen to only on the ModDB page. Um, it's not actually in the demo. Now, this puzzle section adds a little bit of puzzle elements because there's this block here and you can't go into this area, which you need to go to. What you need to do is you see this gear here. If you shoot it... Now, you have to look at it first. You have to look at it. There we go. It was glitched there for a second. He wouldn't look up. 
if you shoot it, it'll spin, and if it spins, this will lift up. Now, you have to be careful in the demo with this. These blocks aren't coded to kill you if they fall on you yet. They are kind of just coded to block you. So if you fall, if it falls on you by accident, you will get stuck in there, and you'll have to restart the game. So a little bit annoying, but it is a demo, so you can't expect it to be perfect. Let's grab some health. And if we go over here, we get ourselves a chest. You got jump boots! Look how happy he is. That is such a, a very happy face. These boots enable you to leap high, true. Both to reach new heights as well as to achieve old dreams. Crying smiley face. At least that's what the tag on them says. Press the B button to launch yourself high in the air. That kind of lies to you. It says to press the B button, but by B button, you can guess it means either the B key, which actually doesn't do anything, or the B button slot, which would be the C key, which also doesn't do anything. The crate is empty. What you actually have to do is you have to press enter, you have to go to equipment, and then you have to equip your jump boots. Now, originally, when I first played this demo, I couldn't figure out what in the world I need to do with these jump boots, because it says press B, and I just thought, hey, press, this, press the B key, or the B button slot, what'd you see? And I didn't do anything. So we're going to set our jump boots to the B button slot for right now. We're going to replace our item finder because we don't actually need that. I believe we don't need that for the rest of the demo. So we're pretty good just by putting our jump boots on here. If we go up to this, jump boots, we can now jump. It, you can see that it uses the, uh, the, the, the roll animation. So you can see that, uh, it's kind of interesting how it really reuses that animation, a little bit annoying. Also, something I forgot to mention earlier, fire doesn't hurt you. You are red, fire is red, therefore you are fire. I'm not sure why fire doesn't hurt you, but I always like to check if hazards hurt you in games, just because they should. In reality, I should be losing health because I'm standing on fire! But apparently, uh, nope. This game does not live in any sort of reality. Now if we jump up here and we do this... We can fall off immediately, which is fantastic. I gotta be careful, I don't use up my ammo. Let's reload here for a sec. Jump here. We have, you got, a hot container! Your health increases by 20. So that's a pretty cool thing. That shows that in the final version of the game, there will be secret areas that you can go to, and they will have health upgrades. Health upgrades are always nice. Any kind of upgrade is always nice. You can get out of this area by either jumping over there and on top of this, or you can just go out the way you came in. We're going to go out the way we came in. Since I missed that jump, I don't feel like going back up there. There's nothing else up there except just a way to get back, or a way to go forward, I guess. I'm not sure why they have this here, because if you shoot this gear, that opens up this blockage, but you can't go over that gap unless you get the jump boots that you need to go to that area for anyway, and, you know... There's no reason for it. I fell in a hole! That's not coded to kill me! I'll be back in a moment. Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that, but there are holes in this demo that aren't actually coded to kill you as of yet. A little bit annoying, but unfortunately there's nothing you know about it. There's that hole that I fell in before, and then there is a hole later on that I will hopefully actually avoid and won't fall in. But we're pretty close to the end of the, of the demo. If you, since we now have the jump boots, we can now jump over this fence and shoot these guys in their proverbial faces. Unfortunately, though, there isn't actually anything else over here. No garbage cans or anything that I know of. Just a randomly open building that you can go in, but you can't go in because you can't see what's going on. So the only thing left to do is actually backtrack a little bit. Now, there are screenshots on the page of this game showing off some of the new stuff and showing off that he's changed uh, the, the, the looks of it a little bit. He's toned down on the brightness of some of the sprites, such as the trees. They're not as bright as they are in here. But aspect-wise, I guess you would say, uh, artistic-wise, pretty much the same. Can I actually jump on top of that? No. What you need to do now that we can jump is now we can jump into this sewer. You sewers, but well, the water's pretty clear. In the sewer, there's a few ways to go. You can go over here to no avail because this is kind of like a get back area in case you fall off. Because then with the jump boots, we will actually be doing a lot of jumping. And we're getting relatively close to the end of the demo. I don't think there's a way to get in there. I want to see. I haven't tried this yet. 
I want to see if I can blow that up. No, I cannot. Oh well. Unfortunately, that's the that's that's the end of the road there. But we can go this way. We can go this way. I like the the light, the light they have in here. Like, like it's actually looking through a grate. It's pretty cool. It's, there's a lot of a lot of good choices when it comes to design. I don't want to fall down this waterfall because that leads to the other endless pit, if I remember correctly. There's a lot of good aesthetic choices in this game so far, and I can't wait to see um, what comes of it later on. Now I need to make sure we don't fall here. I'll have to walk all the way back. A little bit annoying. I'm a ninja! There we go. Look at that rolling. That beautiful rolling. I love the roll. It's not really too useful, but I just like that it's there. And then if you go in this room, you can see that there is nothing else to do. To my knowledge, this is the end of the demo. I haven't been able to figure out anything else after here. So that is going to be it for this episode of Free the Game for Soldier of Demo. You can check it out on the ModDB website for it. You can download it yourself and play it if you feel like it. And you can definitely, if you're interested in it, you can uh, keep track of it. There is actually a thing on ModDB where you can track games. And if you have an account on that website, you can be notified when there are new news or new images or anything added on for that game. So, I will probably keep track of this game. If there's another demo of it released, or the full game um, ever comes out, I'll probably make a free of the game episodes of that as well. I do believe that the game is meant to be free when it's finished. I kind of hope it is, because if it's not, then uh, it kind of doesn't make sense for me to put it on this series. But if it's not, you know, then it's not. Hopefully the guy will raise it cheap, because this game looks really fun. Looks pretty fun. Now, I did check out his blog. Um, in between when I fell in that hole and I worked my way back to uh, the hole earlier in the game. And it turns out that for a month that it says on the blog, for this month of October, he's kind of taking a break from Soldier Of and working on a co-op game. He did get the suggestion from some people to maybe make a co-op or survival mode for this game. So he might be trying to figure out... I actually, I'm guessing it's a he. It might also be a she if they in the game. I don't know. Like, I might be trying to figure out how to do co-op and, and uh, multiplayer aspects because they want to put it in Soldier Of, so they're testing it out with a different game, a smaller game they're working on. But some of the things that are going to be added to this that were also on the blog is a map, a mini-map that you can pull up, and a lot of other really cool things. So that is going to be it for this episode of Free the Game and Soldier Up. I hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Mega Pie Man, and I will talk to you guys later.